Hi, this is Michael. Um, I wanted to walk you through um, a new feature that Koala Sampler just added, um, which is MIDI out. Um, the developer today released a video and he showed that he was using the MIDI out feature to drive his synthesizers, hardware synthesizer. And I thought that was really cool, but I don't actually own a hardware synth. I don't own any hardware. So I wanted to show how you could utilize this feature with software synthesizers um, as that's what I have. And I think a lot of people would get a lot of value out of this. Um, what I've noticed is since I've been using this new feature is I'm coming up with a lot more melodic um, structures within my koala songs, which has been really beneficial. Um, so it's been really changing my workflow, and so I wanted to show you that. So what I did was um, I brought in uh, a drum app um, as a quick way for us to get drum sounds into koala so I don't have to load them all separately from samples. And I also have two synthesizers that I pick sounds in, okay? So let's start. I'm just going to try to make a quick song, whether it's good or bad, doesn't really matter because it should show you the feature that I'm trying to show you or the, the workflow I'm trying to show. So to um, get the MIDI out, you click on samples at the bottom right, you click on more, you click on the MIDI out and click load. And this um, is a MIDI out pad, but it doesn't actually make any sounds. You have to click on sample, click on edit, and then I like to choose a channel. So in this case, I'm gonna choose channel two. And so if I leave Koala, go back to AUM, click on the hamburger menu to the left of one shot and scroll down to where the channel filters are, I want to only listen to MIDI data on channel two. And the fastest way to do that is to click on none below channel filters and then click on two. So it's listening for MIDI data on channel two. Um, we're not done yet. We still have to click on the MIDI routing icon at the top right of AUM. It's a arrow, a squiggly arrow. And here we want to click on the box that is the intersection between Koala and OneShot, which is right there. So now if you follow um, at the top where Koala is and go down, and then where OneShot is, it bends to the right and points directly into one shot, and now that's routed. So if we go back to Koala, um, and then we click on Sequence, and then click on the keyboard icon, and then click on the MIDI um, pad. Um, if we click on these notes, we're actually not gonna hear anything, and the reason why is because um, the drum app doesn't have any samples on these notes. But once I got to there, I started to hear a drum. Oh, kind of like that. I think that's pretty good. I like that. I like that. I like that. So let's see if we can make a really quick um, sort of um, drum, drum loop. So I am turning on the metronome and hitting record and hitting play. I think that's good enough for now. It's not, doesn't need to be good, it's just a demo. <laughs> so I think usually the next thing we do once we have a drum pattern is we wanna start adding some melodic uh, details to, to our track. So what I did was um, I brought in some single cycle wave files. Um, and if you click on one, turn off one shot and instead make it loop and then add a little release. 
you can sort of hear it better. So turn off one shot. I'm doing it to the second sound now, hitting loop and adding a little release. So now you can hear that these single cycles sound uh, like a sort of bassy sound and a sort of higher pitch sound. So let's add those to our song. Um, I find that uh, normally we would find a bass sound that we like, a sample, and then we would um, click on sequence, we would click on uh, the keyboard icon, click on the sound, and what would happen is it would sound good at the root, which would be here, and then we could usually get it to sound okay for like maybe two or three notes down, and then two or three notes up. But then it would start to sound bad as you got further up and further down. And what I've noticed is with the single cycles, if you make the single cycles shorter or longer, um, you still get enough cycles that it sounds good enough. So here, for instance, our bass sound, it sounds good even up top. And we're getting multiple octaves where it still sounds pretty good. Um, so let's use this to, um, to make some sort of bass line. So I'm uh, going to turn on record, hit play. Let's, um, let's make our uh, double up the, the bars. If we hit clear and then the keyboard, it'll delete those notes and we can try again. bit better. And now we're going to do the same thing for the high sound. So if click on the keyboard icon, click on the other waveform. And let's try to do something with a little more range so we're not just limiting ourselves to the close notes. sounds sufficiently bad, but as you're going to see, if we continue with the process, um, we get a lot of control over what this is going to end up sounding like. So what I like to do is duplicate the MIDI um, pad that we already have, um, drag it over top of one of the uh, waves, and hit swap. Do the same thing. Duplicate it, drag it over the other um, waveform, and hit swap. And now these two uh, are both separate channel two. Let's make um, the first pad channel three, the second pad channel four, and our bass sound now is channel three, okay? So if we go back to Poison, this one is, sounds like this. That one sounds like the higher pitch sound, so let's make that um, listen to channel four. So we say none and listen on channel four. And let's go to this one and listen to it. This one's a bass sound. So let's make this one um, listen to channel uh, four, four, three, three. So now we need to go to the MIDI routing and make sure the Koala is sending to both instances of Poison. And now if we rewind and hit play.
That doesn't sound so bad. Um, and what's nice is you can go in and you can change the sound. So maybe we want a different bass sound. That's fun. Let's stick with that. Let's go to the theremin sound and see what other things we can find. Pretty cool. And um, you know, we can go into our drums and maybe even change our drum sounds if we wanted. Um, all right. So I think that kind of gives you a sense of like, you can do your melody within Koala now and sequence your um, other synthesizers, uh, software synthesizers that are within your host app. Um, the last thing I wanted to show was, uh, even though I typically work in AUM and I don't render these um, different instruments uh, back into to wave files that I import into Koala. I do know that some people like to do that. Um, and then there's a really easy way to do that. Um, at the bottom of each one of the faders, like at the bottom of this, there's a little circle R. If you click it, it turns into a red record and I can arm all three of these channels at the same time. And if you remember, our sequence in Koala was four bars. And so if we click on the three dots at the top of the transport where the metronome is, there's clock options. And right now the sync quantum is set for one bar. And what the, that means is when you hit record, it's gonna record one bar chunks. And if you hit the stop, before the end of one bar, it will record only one bar. And if you go longer than one bar, it will re record another one bar chunk. So in this case, if we change it to be four bars, it'll record in four bar chunks. If we s hit the record a second time um, before four bars is over, it'll record only four bars. If we wait until after four bars, at the beginning of the fifth bar, it's gonna now record another four bars. So it'll record an eight bar chunk, eight bars. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna hit record, wait just a second, hit it, the record again, and then it's going to just record only four bars. So I rewind, um, we can close the clock options, um, and then hit record. And I'm hitting record again to stop it. And at the bottom, you can see the yellow line is keep going. And when it reaches the end, the record is gonna stop. And that's it. So that saved um, my recordings to the recording folder. And now I can go back to Koala, um, click on samples, leave the MIDI folder, MIDI out folder, go into the little cloud on the bottom left. And the top three files, if I hit select, the top three files are the ones I just saved. That's the timestamp of right now. And I hit open, and it brings them in. And if we click them, um, it's a perfect loop. So that is uh, pad A3, 4, and 5. So let's go to a new um, sequence and go 3, 4, 5. And if we hit play, it will play it perfectly and loop perfectly. That's it. So I hope you see the potential um, of the MIDI out feature. Um, it really gives you an opportunity to do a lot of your sequencing all within Koala and stay within Koala and do a fair bit more work all within Koala. You don't need a program like Helium or Atom Piano Roll or Drambo or any of the other really good sequencers um, on iOS. 
you can just stay within Koala Sampler and get back to doing work and you know, it's, it's amazing. So for me, I'm noticing it's changing my workflow. It's also just making my songs more melodic. I love that.